Hi ma'am, uh, this is Jacinth. I am 19 BC 1462. I am uh, here to present you about the project that we have been doing this semester. Our project is basically uh, predicting breast cancer using two supervised learning models and comparing their efficiency. So here I have uh, logistic regression and KNN. So first I'll be going through logistic regression. But before that, cancer is a disease that claims lakhs of lives every year. So one of the premier uh, research methods on preventing cancer includes predictive technology so that is basically what we are going to be doing in this project so uh, we took a data set that is from uci ml uh, repository from wisconsin which is compiled by three phd professors and doctors so uh, basically what we did here is uh, we took the data cleaned it up ran it against a linear regression model and compared the outcome with running the same data set in a slightly different version for the for the KNN algorithm. So moving on the data set. So the data set as I mentioned before is extracted from the UCA ML repository. You can see the source here. It is uh, created by these three people. So uh, we have attributes uh, there are 32 attributes including the id number for each patient's cellular data the data from which we are going to be predicting if they have a cancer or not and then there is the diagnosis the diagnosis is also the response variable for our project so uh, we have uh, two two results for every case because we are going to be using supervised learning methods after all so uh, m means malignant and b means benign so uh, that is uh, the response variable and besides that we have 10 real valued features that are computed for each cell nucleus in the images that have been processed to give us the data set. So here we have radius which is the distances from the center to the points on the perimeter, the texture of the cell which is standard deviation of grayscale values, the perimeter area, smoothness, compactness, concavity, concave points, symmetry and fractal dimension. So we have three properties for each feature consisting of the mean, the standard error and the worst which is also called the largest error of these features which were computed for each image. So this results in 30 plus the ID and uh, diagnosis which gives us 32 columns. So first up we are going to be installing a few dependencies. We are importing pandas and numpy for data cleaning and math manipulation where we will be uh, deleting uh, missing values, uh, replacing some columns etc. And then we have matplot library and seaborn for data visualization and we will be using sklearn's uh, linear regressive model for our machine learning purposes. So uh, this is the code block where we will be importing everything and then here we are reading the data data file which is our data set and uh, we are also printing the first five rows by using the head method from the data frame. So here you can see that we have 32 columns and 5 rows and uh, a point to notice here is we have an unnamed column here which is literally full of missing values. So uh, after uh, uh, seeing this we thought of like just cleaning up the data frame so we uh, checked out if uh, there are any other entries that are actually like empty. So we can see that uh, there are 569 not null uh, data types except for the unnamed column. So here we are going to be dropping the unnamed column right here. So uh, that is exactly what we did right here. And then we are going to be checking the data types of everything so that uh, we can confirm whether we'll be needing type conversion or not. So uh, as you can see here, everything is a 64 uh, float 64 object so there won't be any need for type conversion so now we are going to be taking a closer look at our response variable which is the diagnosis so it's a categorical and it has two classes benign and malignant we are going to be using the sns library here and uh, we have a diagnosis distribution table so uh, which with this data we can see that the number of cells labeled benign in the data set are 357 and the number of cells labeled malignant is 212 so the percentage of cells labeled benign is 62.74 etc etc you can see the data here so uh, i'm i think i don't have a lot of time left so i'll be moving on to 
the other uh, parts of the project so here we will be generating a scatter plot matrix to check out the collinearity between all of our 30 elements so that we can uh, rule out some of them and make our data set a bit more cleaner so you can see that uh, this plot and this plot this plot and this plot stuff like these are like similar so you you can see this and uh, note some patterns here so uh, for instance you can check out radius perimeter and area now anyone knows that uh, perimeter is basically uh, for a circle it is 2 pi r and area is pi r square both of them are dependent on the radius so radius is more like the independent variable here and the rest are like dependent on that so here you can see that uh, since uh, the radius is fundamental you will be free to drop the perimeter and area attributes because it is basically multi multi collinear and similarly you can see concavity concave points and compactness are all the same thing so we can again delete all of them and uh, make it cleaner so we can also make a heat map to check our correlation matrix so uh, we use sns again to make a heat map and here you can get the numerical values written on it so here uh, for example perimeter mean and area mean columns have a correlation of 1 and 0 0.99 with the radius so we can obviously drop the perimeter and area here so similarly we are going to be dropping uh, the unwanted uh, regions here and again the worst is also called the largest value so the largest value is very uh, similar to our mean so again we are going to be dropping all of the worst columns so we'll be using pandas to drop all of them using our data frame and then now our correlation matrix is again uh, drawn with the reduced uh, trim down set of variables so now it looks much cleaner than before now we'll start with the logistic regression model so uh, obviously since it's a supervised model we are going to be splitting the data set into two which will which will we'll be having a train size of 0 0.3 which means 70 percent of the data will be assigned to the training set and the remaining 30 will be used as a test set in order to obtain consistent results we'll set the random state parameter which is an arbitrary value to a value of 40. so here using pandas we are going to be splitting our te test data into appropriate sets and now this is the formula for logistic regression and now we are going to be using sqln for uh, running a linear model and uh, these are the results that we get basically so now we'll feed this test data into this model to yield the predictions of labels and then we'll be checking our uh, accuracy so uh, we make the predictions here and uh, we get the ids and the values here so you can note that all of these values are probabilistic so now we have to change these probabilistic values into uh, into characters which denote whether it's malignant or benign so as you can see here we write the write the code and change uh, it to m if x is less than 0 0.5 and b if x is greater than 5 in the predictions so after we do this our output will be malignant benign benign malignant benign so we can confirm that probabilities closer to 0 has been labeled as m and the ones closer to m 1 has been labeled as b so now we will be evaluating the accuracy of our predictions using a classification report and a confusion matrix so as we know already we will have true negative cases false positives false negatives and true positives true positives being the utmost success and uh, followed by false negatives and then we have false positives and which basically means labeling someone with cancer when in fact they are not and vice versa so uh, after we generate our confusion matrix you can see that our prediction accuracy is 96.5 percentage so our uh, logistic regression model has labeled 96 percent of the test data but this is just the first half of our goal so we could try to increase our accuracy by using some other algorithm but for the sake of this project we'll be looking at knn algorithm which is k nearest neighbors and we'll move on to that soon so moving on now we are going to be using the k nearest neighbors algorithm which is also another supervised algorithm for continuing with the same data set now uh, we'll import the dependencies as needed for the second part of predictive analysis we are going to be using numpy matplotlib again math and uh, collections from which we are going to be importing the square root module and the counter module and obviously pandas and we'll also be using the random package to randomly shuffle our data set to make sure that uh, the training sets and the test sets 
are not not always the same thing so this will result in a variable accuracy but it shows how well our model works so basically that's a good thing so uh, the data set is again from the uci ml repository so we'll be creating a data frame from the file and drop the patient id and missing values are replaced before we proceed further because uh, instead of dropping something here uh, this data set is slightly modified this is the raw data from the same uh, ml repository and it's it hasn't been cleaned like we did the last time so here what we are doing is we are basically reading our uh, wisconsin data and we are replacing the unknown values with with a uh, random number which is like minus 99999 in this case it doesn't actually affect our results that much and again we are going to be dropping the ids because we don't need the ids for the knn algorithm because it will be it will be classifying them into two clusters which is malign malignant and benign based on the training it has received so you can see that uh, the data set is as follows and now we will be randomly shuffling the database and we are going to split it in a fashion similar to the last time so we are, we are going for a even smaller test size of 0.2 and then uh, this response variable is a numerical value instead of b and m we'll have two representing benign tumors and four representing malignant so we then verify the test set uh, we are uh, splitting it here and then we are going to train the data so uh, we split the data and we are just displaying it here so now we are going to define the knn algorithm so this code is again uh for the knn so we basically have uh the algorithm as a function here and now we are going to be applying it to the test set and <clears throat> at this point we are also calculating uh the number of uh, test cases that are correct compared to the response variable that we already have so uh, we print the predicted result and the actual diagnosis side by side with the features of the data set so uh, here we uh, run the knn algorithm again to the test set as you can see and we use the variable vote to calculate our predictions and the group is the actual result which is our responsible uh, response variable and here uh, you can see the uh, the calculations as follows so you can see that the right hand side uh, uh, variable is your group variable and here is your word variable so this is our uh, the value that our data model has predicted and this is in fact the actual value so you can compare the results here and uh, we also have the accuracy so it will be in the bottom of our output so we can see that the accuracy is 95.63 percent so again uh, this is uh, based on one set of uh, test variables and you know the training variables so if you go to the kernel and restart and run everything again our data sets value will be different so the accuracy will also be different as you can see we have a 97 percent accuracy in our second try so uh, knn because of our random shuffling will have variable success rates but it uh, i've literally proven to you that it can also be better than logistic regression so uh, that's it about the project. Thank you.